Before we jump into Unreal, we're going to investigate the alien's behavior trees from Alien Isolation. To do that, we're going to make use of the free OpenCage Mod Toolkit, which you can see on this page here. I'll leave a link to this GitHub page in the video description below. Just so you know, you will need to own a copy of Alien Isolation in order to get this mod to work, okay? So if we go onto this page here and scroll down, we can see a number of different ways that we can implement this mod. Uh, you can simply direct download it from GitHub or you can access the mod from Nexus Mods or ModDB. Probably the simplest method will be to install it on Steam, which is what we'll be doing in this video. But if you did want to use one of the alternative methods, there are instructions that you can follow. Now, I will just also point out that if you do add the OpenCage mod kit via Steam, you do not have to own Alien Isolation on Steam itself. Uh, for example, I own Alien Isolation through the Epic Games Store. Uh, so adding this mod toolkit through Steam is absolutely fine. So if we click on that and open up the link, you'll be directed to the Steam link for the OpenCage mod toolkit. I'm going to open this up in Steam so that I can add it and install it. So here we are on the Steam page for OpenCage. All you have to do is just scroll down and simply claim it for free. And then choose the install location where you want the mod installed. And the first time we run this program, we're going to be presented with this warning, uh, which says, please locate your alien isolation executable file. So we click OK. Now what we need to do is we need to tell uh, the mod toolkit where our alien isolation executable file is stored. So in my case, it's in an, my Epic Games folder. And you just need to select this AI icon here that's, that's of type application and click open. And now we have the mod toolkit installed. There are a number of different options here. The one we're mostly concerned about is this one here, the edit behavior trees option. So we'll go ahead and click that. And now we're presented with the behavior tree editor for alien isolation. And before I discuss this workflow, I'll just point out that there are some documentation links, which I'll include in the description below. The first documentation link is this behavior tree workflow documentation. This is just a general overview of the Brainiac designer, which is the name for the visual designer we were just looking at. And the second documentation link I'll include is a link to the legend plugin node documentation. Uh, unfortunately, this documentation page is incomplete, and not only that, it appears to have been abandoned. And what this documentation page is, is that it includes a link of all the nodes that will be visible in the Brainiac designer that we can uh, inspect and even change ourselves if we wish. When we first open up the program, we're, we're greeted with the program called the Brainiac Designer. This is a visual editing designer for the various behavior trees for the NPCs in Alien Isolation. Uh, you'll notice that it doesn't just include the aliens behavior trees, but also the various android enemies that you'll encounter throughout the game. There's also the face hugger creature, various human NPCs. And it also looks like they've included some various NPC actions uh, listed here as well, which we'll discuss uh, later in the series. Um, in this window down here, you'll find a list of different nodes that you can actually implement in this behavior tree. So not only can you actually look at the various behavior trees, but you can actually edit them for yourselves. Bring up the alien's main behavior tree, which is this one here, the alien underscore behave. If we double click on that, you'll be presented with the alien's main behavior tree. We can left click to drag to navigate that way. And we can use the mouse scroll wheel to zoom out and zoom in as well. But now that we have the alien's main behavior tree open, let's take a look and see what is going on here. So if we zoom all the way out and let's go down all the way to the bottom here, you'll notice that the alien's behavior is driven by a kind of motivation check. So it has these little Boolean conditions based on what type of motivation that the alien currently has. So for example, this one here is has motivation backstage stalk motivation. Now backstage refers to areas where the alien can travel, which are not part of the gameplay area. For example, the player character cannot go up into the ceiling vents where the alien 
travels, when that alien goes up into one of those ceiling vents, uh, it is now considered backstage and um, some of its rendering processes are either shut down or optimized because the alien can no longer be seen by the player when it's moving in a backstage uh, state. So this uh, this motivation here uh, and leads into a branch where the alien uh, is stalking the player but from a backstage area. So you might be stalking the player from up in the air vents. Uh, so if we move along here, if the alien does have this uh, motivation, uh, will be in the backstage area sweep branch. And then it will do a condition check to see if it can break out of that behavior. And if it can, it will then go back into a backstage area sweep motivation. So it's not stalking the player anymore. It's sweeping the area, trying to find uh, something to kill. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. And we're not going to check through all of these today, but I just wanted to show you what's available here. And uh, we will be referring back to this program throughout the series every so often on this next one here we can see that has motivation stalk motivation so this is where the alien is stalking the player within a gameplay area so the alien isn't up in the air vents somewhere where it's not being rendered um, it's it's actually in an area where the player can uh, can navigate through and can find the alien if he happens to come across him. And if this motivation is true, we go into a the area sweep branch rather than the backstage area sweep branch. We have a condition check here to see whether or not the alien has a target. And if that is true, uh, we see is of enemy target, another Boolean check. And if that is true, we check to see if the target is the player. Uh, otherwise, it might be another human uh, NPC character. Uh, if it is the player, then it's doing some other kind of uh, condition check here for the role it's meant to be performing in this uh, part of the game. If that is true, it will then perform that role. Let's have a look at some of the other types of motivations. It has, uh, this one here is quite interesting, has motivation, suspicious item motivation. Now this uh, motivation may be triggered when the player has thrown, for example, a lit flare. Uh, in order to distract the alien. So if the alien sees, for example, that lit flare, it now has the motivation to um, uh, investigate a suspicious item. And if that is true, we go into a subtree here. I'll explain this in a minute. Um, alien suspicious item medium and alien suspicious item common. Now these, these green nodes here, I believe, are all sub state trees so you can also find these for example i believe in the list of behavior trees over here uh, alien all search variants let's see yep so alien all search variants so this is a this is actually a subtree within the main uh behavior tree so the the behavior tree is quite complex it has trees within trees so if if we were for example to double click on this all search variants it will open up that subtree uh, within the main uh, behavior tree viewport. Whereas if we just double click it over here, it will simply open up that in a new tab and we can investigate the subtree in a bit more of a cleaner way. We'll go back. Um, actually, we, we may as well keep investigating it here. So what is going on here. So you'll notice this uh, node here called Linear Select 52. Now I did mention uh, one of those documentation links. I'll just um, for the different nodes in the system we're using. So if we bring back that documentation link, and I'm just going to do a search for that uh, the name of this node here, Linear. Uh, we'll type in Control F and then Linear. And unfortunately, it looks like the documentation hasn't been written for this, but there is a little bit of um, information about what this is. It, it's a type of selector node. So the documentation here says selector nodes are composite nodes. A selector node will return a success if any of its children do. The children are executed in order and execution is stopped as soon as a child returns success. Okay, so what does this mean in the context of what we're looking at here? So basically, 
the selector node will try to um, fire one of these child branches, okay? Uh, so it's got four different branches it's going to try. And what will happen with selector nodes is that uh, it will return a success when one of these branches is successful. So that means, for example, if we try to execute the first branch, we'll try number one. If this branch uh, is successful, then it will simply fire the logic that is in this branch and it will not fire the logic in any of the other branches. Alternatively, if we enter this branch here and this branch is not successful, it will then move to try the next branch in the um, selector until it finds a branch that is successful. Uh, so if we if this one fails, we move on to number two. If this one fails, move on to number three. And if this one is successful, based on the based on the rules and the conditions that are defined, then it will then fire uh, this branch, and it won't go any further. Okay. And then we move to this interesting node here called linear as well, but you'll see that this time it says sequence rather than uh, SEL for selector, okay? So a sequence is different to selector. And now if you've used Unreal Engine 5's behavior trees, you're probably somewhat familiar with sequence and selector nodes because uh, Unreal Engine 5 also has these. So that's really helpful that it has very similar structure to what we may already be familiar with in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, but the difference between between a sequence node and a selector node is that a selector will uh, return a success when one of these sub branches um, returns true and it will only then fire that branch. Whereas a sequence, if we go back to our uh, documentation here uh, and right underneath selectors, we have sequences. Sequence nodes are also composite nodes. A sequence node is effectively an AND statement and requires all of its children to return success. With the sequence node, it requires both of these sub branches to be successful. Let's do a check to see if this condition is successful. Uh, once it is successful, it will then move on to the next sub branch in the sequence. Uh, which I believe, what have we got here? Stateless. Uh, okay, this is interesting. Stateless. Let's have a look in the documentation to see what this might be. So if we go control F and we type in stateless. Okay, so uh, it looks like a stateless sequence is also, a uh, stateless is also a type of sequence, um, but unfortunately the documentation hasn't been written in here. Uh, to explain the difference between the two. Um, I'm assuming that a linear sequence uh, will try to execute the branches in order, whereas a stateless sequence um, may uh, try to execute all the sub branches uh, either simultaneously or in no particular order. Um, I believe that may be the case. Ultimately, as, as we go deeper into investigating the alien's behavior tree, you can see that although the main behavior tree may seem very complex and overwhelming, particularly when you consider that, you know, all of these are also subtrees within the um, alien's main behavior tree, you can see that it's, it's quite expansive. But when you really get down to it, it's very simple. Ultimately, it's still governed by very simple rules that as programmers, we can really leverage with powerful tools in Unreal Engine 5, which is why it's really exciting to be able to access mod toolkits like this, to be able to study what the developers have done and, and enrich our own toolkits um, as game developers. So now that we've uh, had a brief overview of the Open Cage Mod Toolkit, in the next video we're going to jump into Unreal and we're going to start exploring state trees and how to use them. Uh, please be sure to like this video and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.